Hello and welcome to Scale War Machines. Well, obviously these are incredible times because we're living with the coronavirus pandemic. The UK has been in total lockdown for a couple of days. I thought it was time to make a film that responded to that and to tell you all about what the plan is here at Scale War Machines. Most modelers might relish this situation because ultimately you've probably got a stash of kits, we certainly do, lots of equipment, maybe some gloves and respirators, and the idea of locking yourself away and getting some bench time is probably very appetizing. Now usually Scale War Machines is a team effort. There are various people behind the scenes who help out. I'd say what you see on the channel is about 95% my own modelling, but there's also work done by other people, and also sometimes the editing is farmed out to other freelance editors. At the moment it's only me. Given that I've got a workshop full of equipment and plenty of models and paints, it would make sense to do a lot of modelling. However, there's one problem. I'm still working from home and there's lots of work to do to do with my day job. Scale War Machines was started in 2012 and has always been a sideline. It's a hobby, but most of all it's done for the enjoyment. So what's the plan for the coming days? Well, ordinarily we publish a video either once a month or a couple of times a month. Because this situation is slightly different, I'll be trying to release a video as often as possible, and it's going to be very different in nature. It'll be slightly less edited with a bit less post-production. And the objective is to go a bit more behind the scenes of Scale War Machines. For this first film I thought it would be fun to show some of the unfinished projects and projects we have on the go that could potentially be finished in this lockdown period. There's quite a few of them. The reason we have so many is mainly because of the nature of the channel. Lots of projects are started either just to make a video or a part of a video. So this lockdown period could be a welcome chance to have a go at them and complete them. And in this first one we'll have a look at some of the first shelf queens or unfinished projects. That we've got kicking around the workshop. I'll talk to you a little bit about each project and the work that's been done. I'll also take this opportunity to show you the setup behind the scenes at Scale War Machines. Let's kick off with that and take a little look around the work area. I'm just gonna, just gonna unplug. This is the setup, so it's a workbench area within a sort of workshop. This workbench has been with me for ages. It's had various different reincarnations and part of the reason why we might not do as much modelling as we intended in this extraordinary lockdown period is because I've also got to completely redo the whole workshop area. There's a plan to put new top on the benches, completely change the look, but also because this space has to be shared with my other hobby, which is building stuff and is actually a genuine workshop in the other half of this building. Because of the YouTube channel, there's good lighting in here, monitors and camera mounts, and I usually run a couple of cameras and occasionally a GoPro. Very, very rarely we've brought out an old GoPro for this purpose. All the paints are arranged above the work area, and that's going to change. Part of the plan for this whole YouTube studio, if you like, is to completely change it and put the paints away and actually have more models on display. But anyway, you can see their Vallejo paints there, Tamiya, Life Color sort of um, MIG Productions, Wilder and so on up the top. Then there are various primers also dotted around and loads of storage for the usual tools and what have you. Over in that section we've got all liquids like um, brush cleaners and thinners and cupboards to store more stuff over there. And in that corner over there you can see the, uh, the spray area which features a lot in uh, the airbrush show. There you can see it, which is basically a spray booth. This, uh, there's a video on the spray booth if you're interested. That's also a useful storage area for airbrushes and what have you. Without further ado, let's have a look at some of these unfinished projects and I'll talk you through them. We'll start off with the stuff that's most nearly complete and there's a lot of models around the workshop that you're going to see, but we'll start off with this one. This is the Academy ACAV and you might have seen it appear in a couple of videos. This is very nearly complete. It was a great kit and a fair amount of work was done on it and one of the really fun bits about it is all the interior details which if we lift this off you can see and that was huge fun doing all those details. What I might do is put up a poll or something and you can let me know which films you'd like me to make in this period of isolation, whether you want to see any of these particular models finished off. So anyway, the idea for this was some sort of diorama eventually. But the main point of making this was to show how you can detail the interior of a vehicle and there was plenty of accessories and stuff that went into that. Pop it loosely back together. As you can see, it's kept all loosely assembled so it can be 
painted and finished at a later date. The next one I'll show you is the uh, Tamiya LRDG. This is also very nearly complete. And it's got the uh, Black Dog resin conversion set. Uh, the plan for this one, if I get the box, the plan for this one is to use some custom figures that were created and that will be the subject of a future video about making and sculpting your own figures. So there's a guy who sits on the back, he operates the Vickers. There's a commander character who I think goes on the front. Anyway, he's pretty much sculpted. Yeah, something like that. That would certainly be a fun project to finally put to bed and finish. Um, there are various parts missing, but they're all in the box. And there's also another character. He's the driver, sort of looking over his shoulder. He fits in there, like that. That's the general idea for that one. And the idea is to put this on some sort of um, slightly inclined display base, um, replicating a sand dune. It's obviously a great kit, a timeless kit really. The additions on the model were some resin wheels from Hazar Productions, the aftermarket resin stowage kit, uh, and that was also complemented with additional stuff in Tamiya Quick Type, uh, which is a putty, two-part putty. A few other projects on the go. Okay, this. This is just awaiting painting. This is the excellent kit. This is a fantastic kit from Dragon. The 88mm Flak 36 in 135th scale. It really was a joy to build. It's like a little piece of machinery, really. It's fantastic. The detail's amazing. It was built more or less out of the box with a few enhancements like wiring. Just see that if I pick it up. Underneath, little control cables, wires at the side and so on. That is just such a lovely kit. I took it to my local model club and a few of the members liked it and said it's almost a shame to paint it, paint it and I kind of agree. I think it's it just looks awesome like that in its kind of natural state um, so it almost seems a shame to paint it really. Over here we've got the Trumpeter KV2 this wasn't built by me, this is an example of a collaboration. This was built by another modeler called David McNaught, who did a fantastic job on it. And it's really been kept for tutorials. It's been painted in ammo by MIG paints, which are excellent. Tend to use all sorts of paints, really, and have no particular preference. They're all good. Every single paint range that I've had the opportunity to use, they're all excellent, really. So this has been painted using the Harder and Steenbeck, and it does feature in one of the Airbrush Show videos. So if don't know about it there's a series on scale one machines called the airbrush show which looks at airbrush products and airbrushing in general this is uh, pretty near to completion all it needs is a bit more weathering and this will be good to go it's been deliberately left in a kind of new f as factory state really for a diorama idea where it's just been abandoned in the early summer of 1941 this is a uh, one of my first kits when I was young and the plan with this is to actually rebuild it. You can see there's been a bit of rebuilding going on. It was painted and finished uh, many, many years ago, but I kept it and um, it's the Esky or you can also get it under Revel Boxing. One ninth scale BMW R75. This is the one without the sidecar and the plan is just to upgrade it and repair it really and repaint it uh, using a figure we've actually got from the Dragon reboxing as well. So that would be fun to finish. The plan is not to get this kind of super detailed, it's just to move it on through and finish it. Therefore let us know in the comments if you're interested to see me have a go at this and finish that once and for all. Otherwise we've got this, might be of interest to you. Uh, this is the mini art kind of Middle Eastern building. Can't remember the exact name, but it's a vac form like all their building kits. Um, and it's come out quite well. The idea is to incorporate it into a diorama. We also filmed a lot of the chipping effects on the, the wooden shutters, so that's something that could be edited into a film as well. That is pretty much done. I think we'll do one more now in this session. There's one thing I'm waiting to do on it, which is to do a tutorial on adding mud and weathering effects to all the uh, running gear. This is the Trumpeter E100. It was again built by David McNaught, so thanks to David for doing that and this has been a real joy. There's still a bit more weathering to do but everything was filmed. It's been completely done in Vallejo acrylics. 
and the plan is to do a dedicated video about using acrylics on arm models. If you'd like to see me have a go at uh, weathering that then and doing all the mud effects using Vallejo products, put that suggestion in the comments. That brings me then to what would be a good subject for the times we're living in, the times of crisis and apocalypse. We haven't quite got to a zombie apocalypse yet. We've been sent these by Hysterex agents and this will probably be the next video that we publish on the channel. And so we've got one, two, three, four of them and they will feature, but two of them jumped out at us as possible perfect subject matter for self-isolation in a current pandemic. One is some sort of zombie survivor girl and the other one is some sort of dystopian sci-fi and post-apocalyptic wasteland female figure with an AK type rifle. Let us know which of these two you'd like to see because I'd really like to build and paint one of these during the whole lockdown type scenario in which we're in. The rest of them will all feature in a forthcoming video very soon which we'll probably record today or tomorrow. Well I hope you've enjoyed it, it's certainly been fun to show you a bit more of the uh, setup here. Uh, in the meantime uh, be safe, enjoy your modelling and see you soon. Bye. Subscribe for our latest videos.